Hello everyone, my name is Saad Ali. I am an engineer on uh, Google Kubernetes Engine and I'm joined here by Aparna Sinha. She is the group program manager, uh, product manager for all of Kubernetes and uh, Google Kubernetes Engine. Uh, pleasure to have you with us, Aparna. Thank you, Sun. Pleasure to be here. So you uh, have been deeply involved with the strategy for GKE and uh, defining the product vision. Um, what do you think uh, sets the, the offering that GKE has today uh, in terms of what customers are asking for. Yeah, sure, yeah, I've been uh, with the project for the last three and a half years. Uh, so really sort, sort of seen it grow from a baby until, you know, uh, I would say much broader enterprise adoption, uh, both in the open source as well as of course on our cloud with, with GKE and really have um, been with the GKE service from the beginnings as well as we worked through first introducing it as a, as a service and building all of these enterprise grade features into it for enterprise readiness, making sure upgrades are uh, you know, much more automated and uh, you know, low impact for the customers and moving into the future, providing GKE on-prem. So what I've heard from customers and, and users, you know, both open source users and customers, is that um, you know, they want to be able to use GKE in their own on-prem environment, which is why we're introducing GKE on-prem why we introduced it at uh, GCP Next, and you know, we're moving forward with that. Um, and they want to have kind of Google's expertise uh, from having managed it in production as a service for the last three and a half years, um, as well as the expertise that comes from being directly involved deeply uh, with the open source project. So you probably saw in my keynote, um, you know, I showed the distribution of contributions to Kubernetes um, open source over the last year based on CNCF statistics, you know, um, Google is contributing 40 plus percent of, of that. And so what that means is that we're very current with all of the issues um, with Kubernetes. We're building solutions. And so when you partner with Google, you have that partnership with, you know, the core maintainers. Um, and so for example, on GKE, we're always um, ahead in, uh, you know, knowing what's coming up, um, you know, for our users, both in the open source and on, and on the cloud with the vulnerabilities, security vulnerabilities that are happening, um, you know, we're always uh, patching them ahead of time and then bringing them into GKE, making sure that the most secure version is there. Same thing with the, with the versions and upgrades, you know, finding the problems and making sure that the customers doesn't ha doesn't, don't have to worry about it. So that's kind of the second piece. Um, customers love Kubernetes, I would say, um, you know, for all of the feature functionality, the resiliency, the productivity, the higher utilization that you get when you run your applications on Kubernetes, but they also um, don't always want to manage Kubernetes and have to keep up with all of the capabilities and program all of the capabilities. So we try and provide a much more managed distribution. You know, we'll be providing it on-prem, but we've been providing it in the cloud for several years. Uh, not only managing your masters, obviously managing the sizing and the, and the backup of your etcd and you know, scaling of the masters, but also managing mo much more of your cluster itself um, with, with node upgrades and node auto repair and node auto scaling. These are some of the features that over time we've brought in to make sure that customers can worry less about the infrastructure. And then I think it, I talked about it in my keynote today, we're building also up the stack, you know, providing um, now node auto provisioning so you can kind of you know, be hands free. You don't have to worry as much about is the cluster running? You can focus on what do you want to run in the cluster. Um, and so we've uh, actually just this week, in fact, earlier today announced that Istio on GKE is moving to beta and it's available for existing clusters as well as new clusters. Um, and uh, you know, we're going to be providing it with a single click install, which I demoed in the keynote and also um, you know, providing basic lifecycle operations, so upgrading Istio. So it's really kind of a lot easier to, to use Istio. You don't have to know a lot of the guts of it yourself, uh, but you can get the benefit of being able to monitor and view and discover all of your services in the entire across your clusters. And then also be able to set security policies, um, ensure you know, encrypted traffic and uh, authentication, and then also be able to use the basic functionalities of a proxy like, you know, for load balancing obviously and, and also for traffic control. So those are the capabilities you sort of get for, not entirely for free, but much more easily in GKE. And then lastly, um, is, is bringing that develop, developer experience with Knative and the GKE serverless add-on, which is still in alpha, but that is also something customers have been looking for. They want, they love Kubernetes, but then they want to give their developers kind of a hands-free experience where they can just go, use all of the functionality, 
write their code, focus on their code, and not have to worry about all the rest, not have to worry about setting up ingress, not have to worry about you know, exposing their services and how to expose the services, not have to worry about how to auto scale. Right. And those are the things that um, Knative does really well under the covers. So I would say, you know, those are the three things that customers have been asking for. Give me something in my own environment, uh, give me something that I don't have to manage a lot of, and give me a good developer experience for my developers. So is it uh, fair to summarize it as, with GKE, we've kind of built this massive open source uh, ecosystem with Kubernetes, Istio, Knative, and we've now made it very, very dead simple to use on the cloud side, and we're bringing the, that simplicity over to people's data centers and kind of completing the story, and uh, um, is that what customers are asking for? Yeah, well, so I think the ecosystem is actually one of the best parts of working on this project and one of the best parts of working with an open source community. Um, the way that the project is architected, it's very much amenable to extensions. Mm. And you know that, you've been working on CSI, which just moved to GA in 1.13, so congratulations. We got a lot of such interfaces, and what that does is it, it really opens the project up to an ecosystem, a very rich ecosystem that can build, and um, not just build, but also customize Kubernetes for specific environments, you know, customize it for the on-prem environment that has a particular type of storage or particular type of networking preference or a particular type of security preference. So all of those things are pluggable. And um, from a business perspective, what it means is that we can, we, can we can bring that ecosystem into our cloud. So Kubernetes, you know, I try to think of it, I like to think of it and call it a Kuber Kubernetes first cloud. Google is a Kubernetes first cloud. It is because, you know, GKE is one of the most popular services on our cloud. You know, the vast majority of our customers use GKE in some form or another. You know, everyone from, you know, New York Times, PayPal, eBay, um, these are some of the, you know, and every major retailer, um, you know, that's kind of fresh in, in, in our minds because we just went through Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and we scaled all these retailers to new heights in terms of their business, all with zero outages. So very, very proud of that, really kind of coming to maturity. Um, so Google is really a Kubernetes first cloud, you know, brings, um, we, we think about, well, how can Kubernetes run well? What kind of networking features can we build? Like network endpoint groups is an example, IP aliases is an example. What can we do to make the experience better for Kubernetes users on Google Cloud? And um, when you have the, the Kubernetes first cloud, I think it makes sense as an ecosystem provider to really come in and provide your offering on Google Cloud. And so that's what we've done with the Kubernetes Marketplace. But then the, the rich thing here, the ri really rich uh, aspect is that we're providing that GK experience now in your own data center on-prem. So that same ecosystem that's in the Kubernetes Marketplace now carries over and now has much broader reach even beyond Google Cloud to on-prem. That sounds awesome. Let's uh, switch gears a little bit and talk about KubeCon. You have been to quite a few KubeCons. How does this feel different from others that you've been to? I love KubeCon. I mean, KubeCon has a real special place in my heart. Um, yeah, this is my fifth or sixth KubeCon, um, and I and I, you know, I've been con comparing and contrasting. Yeah. Seattle is, of course, a very special location. We have a big uh, presence in Seattle. Um, a lot of the, a lot of my team, a lot of the Kubernetes team is based here. And um, I've been here, I think this is the second or third time that we've been in Seattle. And yeah. this is the obviously the largest KubeCon that we've had with 8,000 or, 8, or 9,000 8, attendees. Right. And this is the first time we've been in this huge venue. Mm -hmm. I think it's been uh, very well done. You know, it seems very approachable. There are a lot of people, a lot of familiar faces. The whole community is here. So it's really great to meet everyone. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a real tradition, and I think, um, in particular, the Google team is out here in full force. I think we got more than 300 people. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Uh, what are you looking most forward to uh, this week in terms of uh, activities going on at KubeCon? Well, I'm really looking forward to the keynotes uh, by Brian Grant and Tim Hawken and Clayton. Um, the uh, stories uh, of the old days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I don't know what what the content will be, but that is something that I'm really looking forward to. And then the 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 SIG meetups tend to be, you know, the SIG um, meetings tend to be very popular as well. There's a diversity luncheon, I believe, um, if it hasn't already passed. So I'm looking forward to that. And then just to catching up with all of the familiar faces in the community um, and meeting folks from other companies, um, especially the you know all of these uh, companies on security and networking, that the whole ecosystem that has sprung up. Um, I always really enjoy meeting them and uh, hearing from them. 
and then of course there are a lot of users. Yeah. There are a lot of users and customers here, so that's always the best part. And to wrap it up, uh, kind of put you on the spot, what's your favorite KubeCon memory? Oh, well, you know, <laughs> I don't know if it's my, yeah, I guess it is kind of my favorite. Um, so two years ago in 2016, when we came to Seattle, that was on November 7th, I think, or November 6th, uh -huh. and um, it was election day. And um, the KubeCon after party, right, um, on November 6th, we were all in this, like, wonderful venue, um, you know, all kinds of candles and beautiful lights and great snacks, and everybody was watching the election, and everybody was, was expecting it to go a certain way, and it went a different way. And then the sort of the morning after, you know, just being with, it's kind of like being with your family a little bit, but it's a much more extended family, and, and I felt like... Um, it was kind of nice being with uh, with the cloud native community. Yeah, I was talking time. to Tim earlier today, and he says, you know, even though this is scaled to the scale of 8,000 people, it still feels like a big family. And I think that's the beauty of KubeCon. So thank you very, very much for your time, Aparna, and uh, thank we're you. going to hand it off. Yeah, thank you very much. To you.